this is a very good video I think this person I'm not sure if it's these people here but just the truth put this post out I can't see that it's a YouTube video I don't know where it's come from <clears throat> I don't even know who made the video unless it was this person here but um, I thought it was a really good explanation I don't want to say very much because you have to watch the video um, yeah so I'm not taking credit for this video at all so this person here put it out it's an excellent video to explain our eyes and what it all means our eyes are gyroscopes and the rest is going to be on the video Guys, today I want to talk about the awesome fact that our eyes are actually mini gyroscopes or more specifically our own built-in attitude indicators just like on an airplane don't you think that's quite amazing that it's all built in us we're always looking externally for things always thinking you know oh I've got this really good video game it's virtual reality but you don't realize that you actually live in virtual reality that's what we're living in so you know our eyes are gyroscopes oh well it makes sense doesn't it now when you realize that that's what it is but it's crazy because we just don't think this way because we're not taught any of this stuff I really like how this guy explains this video so um, I think what we'll do is we'll just play a bit more our eyes work in conjunction with the horizon which is rendered by each person's eyes depending on his or her height and altitude. The horizon rendered by our eyes acts just like the horizon reference arm of a plane's attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon. Now this also demonstrates that our eyes are built for a flat plane only. The functionality of our eyes and the fact that they always render the horizon at our eye level is what allows us to see using perspective to distinguish up from down a gradient that is sloping downward or sloping upward near from far and truly proves that we do not live on a ball. Now when you turn your head sideways the orientation of the object you're looking at does not change. This doesn't happen when you record a video sideways with a camera in fact that's very annoying. So why do your eyes do that? Well, it's because your eyeballs are mini gyroscopes. They do not turn with your head. They work just like a plane's gyroscope, but better. You can check this out in the mirror. Stare at a distinctive point in your eye or the iris, and then turn your head slowly, and you'll see that iris or your eyeball, it doesn't turn. Its orientation remains intact. So this is, I, th I find this to be very cool. And the next essential feature of our gyroscopic eyeball is what it renders for us the horizon the horizon just doesn't exist out there our eyes render it for us and it's the same feature as the artificial horizon line on the attitude indicator instrument of an airplane so again what is a horizon a horizon is the line at which the earth's surface and the sky appear to meet to converge and it's the convergence point of things below and things above into the vanishing point or the point at which receding parallel lines viewed in perspective appear to converge. The point at which something that has been growing smaller as it gets further away, it disappears altogether. This is due to the limits of our eyesight. It's a creation of our eyes. If we could see forever, we wouldn't have the horizon line. But then again, without the horizon line, we would not be able to distinguish between items that are above us or below us or taller than us or shorter than us in a distance. You've all seen the telephone poles in a distance. They will always, if it's taller than you where you're standing, they'll be above that horizon line, your eye level line in a drawing or anything. And just a linguistic note, this is very interesting. The origin of the word horizon, which we never think about, but if you think about it, it means horizontal or level. And the concept of level or horizontal is very important in this discussion. It's quite amazing when you realise what horizontal means and that you don't realise, it's a little bit more in this video, you don't realise what you're not looking at. 
uh, is it a bit before? Hang on. I oh, know it's got to be, I won't find it now. But it's in this bit here in the video. So basically, you're not realising the words that you're using and what they really mean. And that's back, back to etymology. Uh, I used a bit the other day. Um, no, no, it was uh, like it's been called Noah. I can't find it now, guys. Sorry. But, you know, when you look up what horizon means, there, that's it. Hor, I, zon, tall. Horizontal. Horizon. That's what I was looking for. Um, it's quite amazing, isn't it? When you see it this way, it's horizon. But when you put ATL on, it becomes horizontal. We just don't realise the words we're using, what they really mean. Um, for instance, in Arabic, horizon is it has literally word for word the meaning of that is level man mental you know it's almost like our internal mental leveling instrument <laughs> it's pretty cool uh, in Hebrew the word for horizon also means level I can't pronounce it but there it is and again we just you just realize that the ancients devised the word horizon because it is level flat in any language horizon is going to mean horizontal or level the horizon that our eyes render is our level. We have a built-in level. I find that fascinating. Uh, so to move on, um, the horizon, it gives us our relativity. Just like the airplane's attitude indicator, it contains the horizon reference arm, our gyroscopic eye works using the horizon that it renders for us to act as our attitude indicator. And again, the horizon for us is the level marker or artificial horizon on a plane's attitude indicator. Our eyes also create the horizon further out if we ascend in elevation, but necessarily still at eye level. If we go up in a lighthouse, our eyes will be able to see further, maybe you know, 10 miles, 20 miles further, and they'll, they'll render horizon that at horizon. a greater distance, yet it's always going to be at our eye level. It's level. Our eyes create our horizon, which will be different for people depending on their height. If you're four foot tall, your horizon in your eye is going to be a different distance than someone who is seven foot tall. Um, but in all cases, the horizon is at each person's eye level, without fail, always. It's how we see using perspective. We need it. Um, like I said, our eyesight is based on perspective. So how do our eyes create perspective? Well, using our eyes as attitude indicators. Our eyes render the stabilizing horizon line, and this allows us to determine whether something is above or below us, taller than us, or shorter than us. This is how we determine if a staircase is going down or if it's going up. It seems obvious and redundant, I know, but it is essential that we establish these facts when we ponder how ridiculous it is to claim that an ever-descending landscape would ever rise to our eye level. You know, just picture yourself standing on top of the ball earth it's impossible you know for our eyes to function that way we would not be able to distinguish between a flat level plane and one that is descending away from us because we just wouldn't be able to, to distinguish that's not how our, our eyes work we work based on the concept of level horizon um, now depth perception that's another part of pers uh, perspective objects in a distance will be smaller in size it's with the amazing design of our eyesight. If I'm six foot tall and standing on a flat plane looking toward the horizon, uh, any other individual who's six foot tall will always be at my eye level. If he's right in front of me, he's at my eye level. Ten feet away, he's at my eye level. Fifty feet, you know, a mile, two miles away, he's going to be at my eye level. That horizon level in a perspective drawing, that's that straight line across the page. No matter how close or how far away he is, if he's my height, he's going to be on, his eyeballs are going to be on that line. Um, and now, say a man who's four foot tall, well, he's going to be slightly below that line, no matter. I suppose when you think about it, it's actually obvious when you think about it, that you have to have some kind of gyro system going on in your head. Because if it wasn't there, every time we went to walk forward, we'd fall over. We would just fall over because we wouldn't be able to d distinguish anything. Up, down, right, left, it wouldn't happen. 
So we have this built-in mechanism in our brains. I, I really learnt something from this video. I suppose I've never really thought about it. See, I can't think about everything, I suppose. But when I see things that are very interesting, I'll put them out. So yeah, I thought that was an excellent video, this one. How close or how far away he is, he's going to be below that line. And a nine-foot giant, well, he's going to always be above that line. If he's right next to me, he's going to be way above that line. If he's way off in the distance, his eyes are going to be above that line. This is the beauty of how our eyes work. And this is also impossible on a ball earth. We're designed to live on a flat plane. So this is, this is also how we're able to determine if we're walking toward a hill or a slope. You, know, you don't want to fall down a hill. You know, our eyes are designed so we don't fall down too many hills or too many staircases. And descending grades will never rise to our eye level unless they make it to a flat plane and then the flat plane extends off into the distance and then that horizon will rise your eye level because you're based on a flat plane. This is how perspective works. Um, in these photos, our eyes can distinguish between the downward gradients and the level sections. And like I said, the only reason the horizon rises to our eye level is because you know, we are on top of a level plane. Whether you're on you know, a hill or a valley, everything is built on the same level plane so it will rise to your eye level. If it was on a ball, it would be impossible. No matter where you are or what elevation you're at on a ball earth, the underlying base structure is a ball or a spheroid or a pear, which would necessarily descend away from you in all directions. And therefore, the horizon could never come to your eye level. If it did, it would be a crazy, confusing world like M.C. Escher drawings. You would not be able to properly distinguish between downward gradients, level sections, or upward gradients. Thank goodness our eyes allow us to distinguish between gradients and perceive depths. Otherwise our lives would be one giant slam session, just like in skateboarding. And I know what that pain feels like. <laughs> so, um, in perspective, it's awesome. It allows us to perceive distances. Objects get smaller as they move further away from us. And elevation, the horizon line being the leveling line. Anything below is lower than us. Anything above is above your eye level. This is the leveling feature of our eyeballs. On a ball earth, the horizon would never be at eye level because in reality, it's always sloping downward. Why would your eye render it up at eye level? Just think of it, eye level, level. A ball earth is always descending away. So anyway, so we've watched so we've watched the video now. I really enjoyed that. Another explanation. I like finding these things out and even sharing them. I really hope this person who made the video doesn't mind. Thank you very much for making this excellent video. I mean most of it we really know but don't think about properly to realise what it really, really means. Because we're so programmed by that telly thing. Um thank you very much to just the truthful for putting this post out and I hope nobody minds and hopefully if you didn't know you know now anyway what's your thoughts